Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely, so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast. It's a scorcher today, back from Greece, came straight back to England, and the weather's been record temperatures. I think today hit 40, which I think is the hottest day uh, ever on record. I know they always say that, but I am absolutely sweating. Uh, It is roasting here. So definitely brought the weather back with me, as they say. Um, Welcome to the podcast. You're in the number one place for financial empowerment and wealth creation. This is the always free podcast. And if you're listening for the first time, just please give the little thumbs up or give the little rating five stars, leave a little review as well um, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Um, Really important that you do those three things. Sub rate review that helps us stay up there on iTunes and get this message out to other people and give value to other people. And I really appreciate you uh, listening to the podcast. So been a bit of a busy week for me, Um, been uh, all over the place this week. But uh, as promised, I was going to talk about investing and my take on investing and my kind of uh, approach to investing and what it's about. Obviously, we're not, you know, this is going to, there's quite, I could talk about this kind of stuff for, uh, you know, a, a weekend or a couple of days, maybe even a week. Uh, So I'm going to try and cram as much into the podcast that I think is valuable to you uh, so we can uh, give you the meat and trim the fat. Just as a bit of a disclaimer in this podcast, uh, everything I go through in this podcast should not be taken as financial advice. Uh, Everything I say inside this particular podcast is advice to me as a seasoned and experienced investor uh, based on my appetite for risk and nothing that I say in this podcast should be taken as your own personal financial advice. I recommend you go and look up this stuff um, but I'm not advising that you do any of this. I have to say that just because of the crazy world we live in. just want to kind of talk about my approach on investing because people always say do you do you uh, invest in property and my answer is no right because I'm not a property guy um and the reason for that is because I know everyone says the kind of the property market goes up in value and all the rest of it but my philosophy has always been to invest in things that grow naturally okay so we were talking about evolution last week when i went through the most profitable business on model on earth i was talking about businesses and i was talking about what is evolution what is innovation how do things grow how do things evolve and how it it's a case of solving the problem of space and time well those companies are out there doing that the companies like netflix like uh, amazon like apple and all the rest of those those great businesses out there they're all innovating they've got these teams that are innovating and growing and beating the competition and overcoming challenges and hurdles and problems and they innovate and they evolve and they don't just erode like a brick so with property you've got something going against you called entropy and entropy means like a dissolving system a a a system that reduces in quality over time and if you think about a house, you know, they get built, they get destroyed. Uh, a building will get built and it will have to get destroyed or it have to get renewed or it have to be repaired. And 
in my opinion, it makes I'm more comfortable involve investing in 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 life and people and innovation and humans than I am in a brick, which is a, a lower evolved system. It's a lower a brick or mortar or you know roof tiles or paving slabs. They decay, they, they, they rot, so you've always got that going against you, whereas if you're investing in companies and businesses, you've got the people working towards evolution without you even having to do anything. So it's not everyone's opinion, and property does go up. I know people do well in property, it does go up, but you've just got to know that you are fighting against that that entropy all the time. You've, you know, if you've got tenants... You eventually have to repair something or repair the roof or the driveway or the bricks or whatever. So for me, it just makes more sense. It makes more sense to invest in things that have that automation built in. So stocks, right? Companies, uh, systems, processes, uh, people overcoming the competition without me having to do anything. The greatest minds on earth, the best minds on earth, the Johnny Ives, the kind of Elon Musks, the Zuckerbergs, you know, the the Steve Jobs of the world. Those people are innovating. They're growing. And if you own a stock, that is going on all the time without you having to do anything. When you're asleep, you know, there's there's people out there creating and designing and, and all the rest of it. And if I bought a house, for instance, or a property... It wouldn't do that. It doesn't kind of turn into a better house. It doesn't evolve. It doesn't all of a sudden develop solar panel roof. It just doesn't happen. It just rots until it has to be repaired, broken, or or knocked down and started again. So um, when a stock goes down, you know, because the stocks do go down, but someone else deals with it. Whereas if you've got a property, you've got tenants and you have to deal with the tenants, right? So we're talking about innovation talking about investing in companies so i wanted to stress that before because i wanted to give you my take on my approach to investments and what is comfortable for me i'm not saying that you can't earn money in property i'm talking about investments in uh, business for that reason the best minds on earth apple microsoft right secondly by investing in companies and stocks um you're gonna beat the interest rates uh you're gonna beat the interest rates and you know, over time, uh, over the last, as, la- as as far back as on record, the stock market's gone up 10% per year, and um, people very, very rarely uh, beat that, okay, so people can't beat that, they, they try and they fail, so you might as well put your money in something that is managed, and that's where I bring in index funds, um, index funds are funds of if you take the S&P 500 for instance that's 500 of the top performing companies in the world but the thing is they're managed that fund that pool of companies is managed by some of the best minds on the planet far greater than mine um, and they are managing these companies and these and these funds and Every month, if the some of the companies aren't performing, they kick them out of the bottom, they get new ones in, and that is kind of the evolution. If if the S&P 500 fails, right, if those companies fail, we've got bigger things to worry about in the world than our investments, trust me. Like, that is evolution of humans. We've got, we've got the best companies in the world developing technologies, pharmaceuticals, um, everything in that pool of companies um, is what makes the world go round. So the question I get asked most is what stocks should I buy or when should I buy the stocks? And, you know, how do you know if, you know, Apple's gone up, but how do I know that it would would have gone up? Or how do I know Amazon would have gone up? And before you're looking at it in that way, you really have to understand uh, risk. You have to be aware of risk. So I'm going to kind of talk you through the three types of risk that you pay attention to when you're investing in the market. So the first risk that you want to pay you want to bear in mind is the company risk. So if you was to just invest in one company, um let's just say Apple, right? You've got a risk because you're just into that company. You're just investing in that company. So all your eggs are in one basket. And if that company flops, then you're out of there, right? So you're very, very high risk if you're just 
um, investing in one company. There's people that do very well doing that. They pick a company, but they know the ins and outs of the company. They know the team, the board of directors. They get the minutes from the meetings. They understand the forecast. They know what systems they're putting in place, what plans they've got in place. And they're happy to just monitor one company and they believe in the company. Therefore, they'll go for that. Like Warren Buffett, for instance, is he, he owns uh, much of Coca-Cola because he knows everything about it. You know, he might hate the drink, but he understands the business. He believes what they stand for. He knows what they're going for. And uh, he knows everything about the business. So he'll, he'll put his eggs in that basket um, on his, on his uh, stock picking, his company picking. So that's company risk. The second thing is market risk or sector risk. So let's just say, for instance, um, you know, you're, you're buying technology. Let's just say you're buying Apple and Samsung and Sony and a pool of technology businesses. Well, of course, if the technology industry takes a dip, um, you are at risk to some degree because you've only picked one sector. If you're just if you're just investing in, um, you know, a certain type of food industry or, or, or if you're investing in some kind of uh, wellness industry or some kind of specific product, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's uh, makeup or beauty. If you're just investing in companies that are beauty, then you're at risk for that sector or that market. So the index fund for instance, will mean that you're diversified because S&P 500, for instance, 500 companies, it's well diversified across all of the markets, sectors. It's got everything from uh, wellness, nutrition to, you know, to um, skin care, right through to security. Um, you've got technology, everything, right? Everything you can think of in, is inside that fund. So, if you was to buy the entire market, okay, you would escape. If you was to buy a fund and own little bits of every single one of those, you'd you would mitigate that risk of sector risk, if that makes sense. So, the last risk is time risk. So, time risk is when people say, well, when should I buy? Should I buy when it's low? Is my broker going to put me in when it's low? And then, you know, kind of every time, buy at the right time, buy at the right time. And that's a time risk. So what you wouldn't want to do is take 100 grand or 200 grand or 10 grand or whatever it is and dump it all in at once. Because what you're doing is you're getting in at one price. Whereas if the if the fund has, has demonstrated that it's gone up, over the last 60, 70, 80 years, 100 years, right? Over time, on average, it's gone up 10% per year for, for 100 years, say. The last thing you want to do is dump it all in at one go. You know that it's going to go up. That's what it does. It's innovation. It's businesses. It's humans. It evolves. It's managed by a, a fund managers that have got great minds and they're assessing and evaluating the underperforming companies. What you want to do is you want to buy in at regular intervals, and that's called dollar cost averaging. So what you're doing is you're you're benefiting from the mean price of the of the rise rather than trying to pick the bottoms, um, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So you don't want to buy low. You don't care. You don't really care when you buy low. There's a, a, a famous investor called Benjamin Graham. Now Ben Graham was Warren Buffett's uh, mentor, and he had a saying where he said, "You want to buy your stocks like groceries, not like perfume." And what he means by that is you buy your grocery, groceries regularly every single week, every single week, every single week, and you're not fussy, you're not picky, you don't stop buying them. You buy them every week, whereas your perfumes, you might go in, spray one, mm, you know, I uh, don't really know, I might change this week, I might change next month, I might, you know, I might buy one in a few months' time, uh, might not buy that one anymore, and you're picky and choosy. Whereas if you bought them every month, every month, every month, like your groceries or your shopping, then you're going to benefit from that growth uh, over time. So you don't care if it's high or if it's low. If it's high, your investments are going up, well done. If it's going down, then you're getting more for the same amount. And if it drops you know, to half, you, gain even more, you can get even more. So that's called dollar cost averaging. And that's where you met, as I say, you benefit from that mean price. So how do you buy groceries? You don't. You stop, do you? You keep buying them. You regularly buy them. 
and you don't stop buying them. So my advice is to buy the market every time you get paid, okay? Just so like we've been talking about the savings account and all the rest of it. Every time you get paid, you buy the market. And you buy the market via low cost index funds. And this is a strategy by Warren Buffett. I didn't make this up. Um, you buy the market, the entire market, as in a pool of companies, a pool of sectors, every single month via low cost index funds. So people that try and pick stocks, you know, they can rarely beat the funds over time. And that's when they come unstuck. They try, you know, they start trying to pick the stocks like perfume and they, they come unstuck. So as I say, I didn't make this up. This is Warren Buffett. Check out Warren Buffett. And in fact, he was asked... Uh, in an interview, what he would do if he died, you know, what, what would happen to his estate. And he, he said something along the lines of my instructions to the to the trustees couldn't be couldn't be more simple. Um, he said 10 percent to short term government bonds and 90 percent to stocks via low cost index funds. And he actually he actually suggested or recommended Vanguard. So some of you might have heard of Vanguard. I'll be talking a bit a little bit about that in a minute. So. Trying to pick winning stocks is a skill you need to build. If you're going to try and do that straight away, you're probably going to be dead in the water. I wouldn't advise it. I would say do this for now and build up uh, your skill. So I want to go back a little bit then, backtrack a little bit to what we've kind of been talking about up until this point, where we're talking about you've got the savings account. So when do you start doing this stuff? Well, you start doing this when you've built your cash buffer to either three or six months living expenses, however, whatever felt comfortable to you. And that's why over the last few, uh, last month or month and a half or so, I've been leaving time for you to start building a cash buffer. I didn't want to go straight into this because you need some time to build up. And those of you who are following the podcast along, uh, you're still going to be doing that. And you might even still be doing that now. So you probably will still be doing that now. But once you've got the cash buffer, and the reason we don't do it until this point is because if you try and invest money when you don't have a cash buffer, your mindset is wrong, okay? You don't feel comfortable investing your money until you know you've got a backup plan and you've got something that is just keeping that animal brain quiet and calm. If you're just taking everything you've got and investing that in the market that you you're quite new to and you don't understand very well then you know you're not going to be as calm you're probably going to jeopardize your investments and you're not going to be doing it as like clockwork as I'm recommending here so this is where you do it so you take your savings and now every time that you're in, you're saving okay and you're increasing your savings every 3 months and you're putting the 10% and you're growing that every 3 months Instead, now you've got your cash buffer, which is sitting in your bank, and that can be in either your living account or your savings account, or between the two, or one or the other. You leave that there all the time, and you never touch it. Okay, it could even be in a separate account. It could even be in a completely separate account. That cash buffer, you could call it a cash buffer account. Once that's into three or six months minimum, whatever suits you best, then as you save every month. It might be 10%, might be 11.1%, might be 12%, might be 13%, whatever you're up to at that point. You put it straight into an investment account. Now, the investment account works the same way as the bank. It's, a, it's an automation. It's automated. You, tell the, you, you set up the account. You tell the broker that every month this money is going to come in and it needs to be allocated to this investment. And that's it. It's all automated from then on. And it does it every month, every month, every month. And the easiest way to build in that 90-10 split, what Warren Buffett talks about on stocks and bonds, is to get a fund. There are already funds that are split that way, 90-10. So you benefit from the kind of safety of the low risk and you get that high growth speculation as well. Um, so you kind of it stabilizes that volatility by having that low risk, but you're also you've got the growth as well. So bonds. Just so you know, bonds are in the category of fixed income and stocks are in the category of growth. So you kind of, with the two, at that ratio of 90-10, you get the nice growth but the, the steady equity curve. 
And I appreciate this is a lot to go over. I've tried to cram as much into this episode as possible to give you as much value as possible, much of an insight as possible. But I'm talking fast. I've got a lot to get through. Um, but obviously, I'm trying to get through as much as I can. So what I would say is go and look up the Warren Buffett 90-10 split. Um, it, this podcast won't go through all of that stuff, but you can go and look up the N- Warren Buffett ninety ten split. There'll be tons and tons of articles on it, and you can go and read that up. Warren Buffett contributes a lot to the tr- to the trading investing community. He puts out you know lots of reports every every year that you can go and read. They're freely available. And as I say, going into the exact intricacies on of how to open accounts and the exact funds and how to actually do it is quite difficult to get across in a podcast, which is why I teach this in my program. But I want to get a lot out of this episode to explain what it's all about. And if you want to go and check out Vanguard as a Warren Buffett's recommendation, then that's great. Um, but just know that these are... <clears throat> And then there's mutual funds and ETFs and treasury bonds and there's differences between all the three. But as I said, you know, this isn't the place to teach all the complexities of that. But please go and look up the Warren Buffett ninety ten split. That'll be quite valuable to you. I think you'll get value from that. Now, on top of that, there will there will also be other things like real estate investment trusts. So I mentioned property. Well, there's things called a real estate investment trust, which are almost like the S&P 500, except they're for one sector. So it's still a fund. Okay, it's still managed by the brightest minds, uh, but it's a it, it's a pool of property companies, and you can you can go and invest in a in a pool of property development companies without owning bricks and mortar. So you kind of get the the higher returns on those but it's still lower risk because you're um you've got the fund but it's higher risk than the uh, low cost index fund for instance because you're in a one sector okay so there's lots of other stuff to take into consideration maybe I'll touch on this in future episodes uh, but I want to keep these podcasts for around you know 28 to 33 minutes so if you are interested in this, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter where you'll be notified of my next uh, intake of students. So I'm going to be doing a, a program on exactly how to open all these accounts and what to do and how to pick the, the funds and all that kind of stuff. So going on then, um, when you're looking to invest, uh, as long as you're fit and healthy and able to keep making money, uh, one thing I would say is go for a dividend reinvestment. In other words, don't take the income from the investment. Don't look at the cash and go, oh, I'll take a bit out. Leave it in there as much as you can. Let it compound. And uh, compounding is another lesson, which will, <laughs> again, I could talk about compounding for a whole session, but let the let the interest compound, let the returns compound. And as long as you're fit and healthy, as I say, if you're building a a four um, product system that I went through last week, or you're building a business, or you're fit and healthy, or maybe you're trading as well. Um, just keep as much in there as possible. Try not to uh, to withdraw it and let it compound. And lastly, I guess we're running on now. But lastly, it's worth mentioning. I, I did say low cost index funds, and people were saying, kind of, what's low cost? Well, that's a great question. What I mean is the percentages, the cost of buying these funds are so low. That's why they're low cost. The commissions start at about 1% per year as a broad rule of thumb. Um, if you, and what I mean by that is if you're ever paying more than 1%, you're paying too much. Uh, but the great thing is as your account grows, the percentage goes lower and lower. And for instance, the Vanguard high growth fund that charges, I think it's 0.9% at the start. But then when you get to above, you know, let's just say your account goes to above 150k, it goes down to about 0.29%. Now, imagine just just think about this, for instance, if you had 150 grand property, and you sold the property 150 grand, and you had 150 grand equity, what would the estate agent take for 150 grand? I guarantee it wouldn't be 0.29%, which really reinforces again why I like to invest in things that move forward, things that grow naturally, automatically, systems, processes, and for a very, very low uh, cost. So 
a lot to take in from this episode and um, people have been asking for this for a long long time i put it off as long as possible because i i knew it would be a mouthful i knew there'd be a lot to take in and at the same time i've kind of got to explain it in a way where um you're going to understand it i can't write anything or do any diagrams or show you anything over the podcast so that makes it a little bit more difficult i obviously can't teach you the intricacies of exactly what to do and how because i can't see you you can't see me Uh, That's why I run this in my program. But what I will say is if you are interested in this, make sure you are subscribed to that newsletter because you'll hear about the next opening and I'll be um, informing you when I'm taking in uh, the next batch of clients. So that is it for this week. If you got value from this, if you want, if you think anyone could benefit from the value or the information in this podcast, please give it a share. And until next week, have a great rest of your day and weekend, and I'll see you then. to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com.